should look good. How's it going? Just uh, some stuff for the boot. Anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Flip My Ride. Hope you are doing well. Um, today's episode it sort of uh, covers about three days worth of work I've done on the car. So uh, it, it might, chop, cha might seem to chop and change a little bit. Um, but we're, we're pressing on with it. Look, it's getting close. Um, the bulk is done. The boot is nearly done now. We've obviously done the painting a few episodes ago. I did try and cut some panels for it. You'll see that in today's episodes for the sides of the boot. That didn't work, so I'm going to be doing that again today or tomorrow. Um, and yeah, door cards going back on, but you'll see all that in the episode. So stay tuned. Enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing and uh, hit the notification bell. The funny thing is I've got, um, what, nearly 170 subscribers now, and thank you very much. But based on the analytics, only about 10% of the subscri subscribers actually watch, and that's a bit strange. So um, if you're a subscriber, go and check it out. And if you're not, subscribe or just watch and enjoy it. I don't care, really. Ultimately, it's just about me getting the project done. Um, I am in contact with... Grays online. I'm trying to see if I can work out a deal with them on selling the car via auction. I think that'll make some good content for everyone out at, at home there on you know buying and also selling your car uh, at Grays or an online auction. So I know they have a collectibles auction. I think once every three months, but I'm waiting to hear back from them. Fingers crossed that comes through, but who knows? Anyway, um, the doctor. I think he's pleased. I think he's pretty happy with how things are looking. Fingers crossed. He hasn't yelled at me yet. Mind you, I think he's, he's mute, so I don't think I'll ever hear from him. Piss off. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. New things. Three screws. Screw out here. We've taken the lock out of the door. Little black ceramic thing. What I, I know what I think I'm looking for. In order to get the door cards off, you must take off all the ancillary parts, one of those being the window winder. Now, the window winder has a tricky little clip on it that takes a bit of effort and a I bit of manipulating to get it off. Like that. See? Voila! We need to get the door card off. What's left of the door card? All the clips are broken. Here we go. One door card off. Just a little bit of rust, surface rust along the inside of the door here. And we've got some underneath here as well. So I'm going to clean that down. Still got some rust converter left and some paint. So I was going to um, take the door trim off and pop the dent out that's on the other side of the door it's only minor but I took the uh, door card off and do some treatment on the rust but have a look I can't pop the dent out and this is why have a look at this what do you reckon that is runs all the way through the door so even 1970s this had side impact bars that's what they are they're side intrusion bars uh, Volvo has them they're called um, SIDS, something like that. A SIPS, Side Impact Protection System, is in the Volvo. And the Peugeot here looks like it had that in the 70s. Most cars are just a thin, um, literally just a door skin, not this. And that's actually quite thick. So here's our door card. I tested that the other day. So we've got the die going onto that. Now the carpet. And this corner were rotten, so I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to glue a little bit of MDF into that, I think. I'm not going to replace the whole card. Um, and I have some leftover carpet. Lucky I kept that. And what I've done is I've trimmed it to shape. Look at that. We will paint this and then glue that into place. The big things with old door cards is the clips. So I think we've got two clips that actually are still here. I've taped this up, ready to uh, put some dye on like I was talking about. 
This was the first time I'd ever used spray-on dye, and uh, I took just, I was just a little bit tentative with the first one. I wasn't really sure how it would bond or how that carpet would react to the dye. Once the dye had dried, I used some more of that two-part epoxy to glue the small portion of carpet that was missing in the corner of the door card. Not perfect, but it's a damn sight better, so I've dyed the bottom. You can still see through it a little bit. This is just temporary and um, cosmetic. So I think that looks better. The door card repaired and painted. It was time to move on to the armrest. The armrest has a little piece of plastic running through the middle of it there that has faded. It used to be a shiny silver looking piece. Um, so now I'm going to tape it and paint it. First uh, attempt. I'm happy with that. It's better than the ugly old thing we had. Oops. I have to clean that. A little bit of paint on it. So yeah, what do you reckon? We've got things going on everywhere. I've uh, taken off two door cards now. There's a bit of rust at the bottom of the doors. We've scratched those down and we've painted them with the Rust-Oleum rust converter. Second door card is being painted at the moment. So the door cards need replacing at some point. Um, that's not in the budget. Um, they're just old, <laughs> a bit like me. What else have we got going? We are trying to... So I've just put some of that plastic bonding agent onto this because it was bulging here. So hopefully that'll tackle from the sun here. I've had the clamp on it to try and hold it there. Things are happening everywhere. Without exposing too much of my workman's crack to you, I was able to remove the rest of the door cards, laid them out, taped them up, and continued to paint the black dye on those little carpet strips at the base. Turning my attention back to the door now, we've already uh, scratched it down and painted it in the rust converter. Now it was time to put the base coat or top coat on, the car colour itself. And as I was painting, I managed to get a little bit of paint on the other side of the door, so I just grabbed some thinners and wiped it off. Just hooked into the back passenger's rear door, the right hand side, driver's side rear door and um, took the door card off, it sounded a bit crunchy. It's not rusted like the shit through, but it's had some damage done to it. So I'm gonna scratch that back a little bit more, wire brush it, and then I'm gonna spray rust converter on it. The, um, the lock on the door is really um, stiff, so this is your mechanism. Pull the handle here, pulls the lever, uh, undoes the latch, and your lock is attached to it here. The old fashioned locks. So, it's, I had trouble when I bought the car unlocking the things, they just kept jamming. So that's me trying to unlock it. It's meant to click up nice and easy. And if I look at it, I can hear that, that it's jamming there. There we go. So that is going to need some trusty old WD-40. Give all of them a bit of a... Oh, look at that, immediately better. I know people don't do this stuff. Like, it was obviously playing up. All right, I have just pulled up at a gentleman's house called Lewin, just behind me there. And Lewin, I found out through Andrew, who came and looked at the Peugeot a couple of episodes ago, um, that he's got a whole garage. He works out of home here. It's like a little Peugeot dealership. Wow, look at all that kit, look at all those spares. Lewin used to run a workshop, but now it's more cost effective for him to sell Peugeot spare parts from his garage. I was chasing some new door clips. The ones Lewin found for me weren't quite the right ones, but he did manage to find the interior light covers for me. Got two of those. Alrighty, we've got our stuff. Thank you to Lewin, we've got a couple of parts and he's going to look into a few other things for me. Um, some interesting topics we've just spoken about. Hmm, conspiracies. Anyway, I've got to head off. Ciao! Morning, Sunday, fun day time. Um, get stuck into the Peugeot again this morning, but it's just getting ridiculous around here, quite honestly. 
Um, have a look at this. I've actually got to work out and find the keys I need to shift the cars in order to get into the garage to do some work. All right, so what have we got? We've got Volvo school car, my Saab 95. We've got the i30N, son's car parked around the side of the house, Peugeot keys. Oh, and you're probably wondering what they are over there. I've just inherited another Saab. God help me. I've got to do the castle. I've got to shift the Volvo and the Saab and the other Saab in order to get the space in the garage to work on the Peugeot. Which are those ones? So, um, let's do it, I think. Okay. I've seriously got to sell some. Using whatever I could find, bleach, alcohol, anything, I tried real hard to clean those stained old door cards. I've been using all these products. The colour from this is now coming off onto my rag, so I'm not going to keep going with it. It'll have to do. It's 42 years old, so I can't expect miracles. Well, it looks good, but how does it sound? Does it sound any better? Okay. Again, it's back to that bloody epoxy, that glue. This time, it's to hold the door clips in place because the door cards, the holes that are in the door cards, are so worn. All the door frames have some form of small surface rust, so I'm just scratching them back, treating them with the rust converter, and then throwing a base coat over the top. All but two of the clips popped into place real nicely. To overcome the problem at the base of the door card, I just used a couple of spots of epoxy to hold the card in place. Then reinstall all of those door components. Moving right along, we are going to take, they, they were in the boot, to block the, to block the, oh no, no good, not working. I'm going to cut some new ones. So I've bought some MDF, I've made a template, flipped it over for the other side because they're just the opposite of each other. One has the fuel tank in the way, has the fuel fit filler uh, pipe, so I have to cut around that but let's give this a shot. I haven't used a jigsaw in about 20 years so this will be good. I need a bit of tidying up. Um, you good? After much backwards and forwards, into the car, check it with fits, back to the car, back to here, back to the car, adjusting it. I've got the right shape now, I think, but I wanted a thicker board to make it sturdy enough to hold without bowing. Without bowing like this one did, but it's too thick and it, the, the clips, the clips won't hold it. So I'm going to have to go down to Bunnings and buy, I don't know what's that, two or three mil, two mil MDF to do the job because that ain't it's just too wide. But anyway, I got the shape exactly right now and it'll work on the other side. Back to the drawing board. What I'm not going to do. The MDF for now because it means going down the road, starting cars, warming up cars. So we are going to 
move on to something else. All right, let's work on the rubber for the boot, the mat. Let's have a look at that. I was gonna do it this way, but there's too much cutting. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna run it lengthways. It'll fit in between the wheel arches with a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap, so I'm not overly concerned about that. But I can trim it off, and then the excess, I can cut two little side panels, and they can be removed. Just briefly, because I've been trying to get that bloody panel in and out here, I've had to, I've damaged my paint down here, so I'm gonna have to repaint just that section there. Hopefully um, the rubber mat isn't too sticky and peels up the paint that's not that old. So we'll tinker with this and then we'll call it a day. That's gonna be it. The boot is not dead square, so using liquid chalk, I marked what I thought I needed to cut and then I cut small sections at a time seems to be the way things are going lately. Uh, nothing is exactly going to plan. Um, I've got one door card on. I'm now going to continue with the others once I get the clips for the door cards. The panel I'm trying to make for the corner here didn't get achieved. I've started. I've got uh, the template basically now sorted. I just need smaller MDF, narrow MDF. It's just too thick what I'm using. And I have just completed the rubber mat. Again, not how I wanted it, but it's going to have to do. I can't go and buy another mat. I, I didn't butcher it, but um, I had grand plans. Um, but at least, let's have a look. At least it is better than nothing. So I ran it this way, as I said, to save me having to do a lot of cutting between the wheel arches over here. But that left these little panels here, and, and with all of the uh, body uh, silicon and stuff, it just was a pain in the butt getting around there. So I've just left it like that, and I've just put a little bit of double-sided tape to keep the two stuck together. That's going to be it for today, folks. Slowly, very slowly. I need this thing finished. Damn. All right. See ya. Chin chin.